I've been looking for something dealing with authority arrogance. I was looking in the papers to see if I could ever find something. And it showed up this morning in the morning paper, the Houston Post, dated, of course, Friday, 26 August. And uh, there is a chap by the name of Ken Hoffman who apparently writes a column. I hadn't noticed it before, and I really didn't notice the fragmentation arrogance because I look down at the bottom of his column and it says, these are the top ten most romantic songs of all time, and that caught my eye. <laughs> because you see, uh, my idea of romantic songs goes all the way back to the Wagnerian operas and especially Liebesoid, and it goes into all of the light operas from things like uh, The Chocolate Soldier and The Vagabond King and Rose Marie, magnificent songs. And it goes to uh, the music to which I used to dance, much of which is absolutely fantastic. And I thought of immediately uh, all kinds of things like Stardust, which was always a very popular one, and many, many others. So I was really interested to see how many of these from Wagner, and uh, Rudolf Frimmel and many others would be on this list. And let me tell you, we have really gone to the dogs. <laughs> You'd be interested in these ten songs. Now remember, I'm Beverly Hills pre-World War II. And if there's anything that makes me snort fire, it is to read the, this jackass statement, but I'm going to read it so you'll know what idiocy is. Now these are the top ten most romantic songs of all time. One, when a man loves a woman, Percy Sledge. Never heard of it. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. It doesn't ring any bell about romance to me. Here's one for you. Elvis Presley. Well, he wasn't all bad. He did serve in the Army. Can't help falling in love. I got the idea that Elvis couldn't help much of anything. If that's romance, spare me. Here's one for you called I Honestly Love You. When you have to get that strong, there's something wrong. You know, if you honestly love someone, what about all the people you just love? <laughs> and this one apparently is called Olivia Newton-John, whoever that is. Now here's one, the most romantic song of all time. You send me Sam Cooke. Who is Sam Cook? <laughs> I'll tell you where they can send him. <laughs> now here's one. This is for idiots only. Endless Love. Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. Never heard of them. Never heard of the song. If it's romantic, we're in trouble. Now here's one for you by Roberta Flack. Killing me softly. <laughs> and Joe Crocker came up with one. You are so beautiful. What does that have to do with romance or love? I mean, you are a lot of things, good and bad. But uh, that, I couldn't, I've never heard of these. I've heard of Kenneth Ro Kenny Rogers. Now, uh, he's in here. Uh, he's one I've heard of. I've heard of Elvis, too. Well, they're the only two. She believes in me. Well, that could be... A, I could give you a whole message on why she's a sucker. <laughs> now, here's one for you. This, I thought, was probably the nicest and sweetest and most moral of all. Put Your Head on My Shoulder by Paul Anka, whoever he is and whatever that is. 
And then the drifters did one, whoever they are. I think that perhaps is 85% of all Christians. <laughs> Save your last dance for me. I don't know what she was doing in the meantime. But it doesn't sound like romance to me or romantic. But that really is what, how I happen to look at this column. There's this column, and we're very serious now, there's a fragmented life. This is called by Ken Hoffman, Get an Earful for Only Two Dollars. And it's in caps. And it starts out by saying, this is Lori in Indiana. I can't sleep at night. I'm so in love with you, Josh. So completely in love with you. That's difficult for me to read these lines. I'm not trying out for the movies. <laughs> I'm sorry that I slept with your brother, and I thought... <laughs> now we're getting down to fragmentation. <laughs> then, whatever this was, and I hadn't caught on to it yet, I know that you know. And then she says, I shouldn't have slept with Scott. It was a terrible mistake. He knows it was a mistake, too. <laughs> Sound like they're all are kind of confused. <laughs> then she adds, please don't blame me. I'll be gone in a week, so don't let this chance slip by. I'm so in love. Well, I got the drift of it, but why? So I thought I'd better read on because I hadn't seen a column like this in the newspaper, but I haven't been reading the newspapers much lately. Then the next face says, yikes, she slept with his brother, Dallas, all my children, the Adam and Eve swinging singles club. Nope. It's the telephone. I figured, well, it might be something like that. And I'm finally hooked on a charge it phone deal. This one is called Phone Confessions. I can't believe my ears. Tuesday night, in addition to Laurie's problem, I heard a guy say he's sorry for stealing at work. I listened to Susan tell Brad in Syracuse that he's a swell guy. She just isn't ready for a sexual relationship. I heard people open up and bawl like babies. Cheryl from the Bronx, you should be ashamed of yourself, she said. Another, I'm apologizing to my husband because I can't relate to his mother or his sister, and I know he wants to see them very badly. Another, they just moved and he wants to move with them. But there's a conflict. Whenever we go see them, I don't understand what's going on. I'd like to say I'm sorry to Don. That's my husband. All of this is for $2 for the first minute and 35 cents for each additional minute. I may need a second job. Naturally, Lori will be off taking, uh, talking directly to Josh, but where would that leave me, listening to an empty dial tone? That's where. Phone confessions, I won't give you the number here, I don't want any of you to be turned into <laughs> mush over this. Phone confessions, where people tell what they've kept locked up inside. Get it off your mind, release your anger, your guilt, your loneliness, anonymously. And should you want to squeal on yourself, just call Miss Apology at, and I'm not giving you that number either, and spill your guts for 60 seconds. No last names, no addresses, and please, no dirty talk. Anything you say will be held against you and played back for everybody and their brother to hear at the third phone number. Miss Apology sounds like an awful nice lady, though much nicer than that computerized woman who announces the prices at the supermarket. When anyone has to confess into a telephone, they have pulled the pin of the grenade. And guilt is arrogance. And all of the other things that were mentioned in this thing simply indicate that the study of the fragmented life is certainly apropos for this time. Well, it happens where Ephesians 4.14